Hey, shalom fam, shalom, it's your brother Manuel. Listen, I'm going to try to do these short videos um, so I can do some quick edifications, okay? Um, I'm going to try to keep them less than 12 minutes, all right? So let me uh, get going. The topic today is mostly just a question in general, like why is it important to know who you are according to the Bible? Why, why is that important? Let's go to it, all right? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3, it says, The cattle knoweth his own... Uh, his own. Matter of fact, I got the different translation. My apologies. Uh, Isaiah 1 and 3 says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel, you Hispanics, you native Indians, right? You people of the Bible, you Hebrews here of this continent. But Israel does not know, my people do not consider. You see, these two animals understand where they live and understand who their owner is. Israel has no idea. Y'all don't know. Most of you guys still don't believe that the Bible is your book. You don't believe that the Bible is a historical book about you. That's one problem for sure. Isaiah 3.11. Here's another one. Give me a second. Isaiah 3.11 reads this. It says, Woe unto the wicked. It shall, be, it, shall, it, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Do we not see that? Do we not see a lot of promiscuousness? Homosexuality, same-sex, well, same-sex marriage, right? Promiscuous. Well, no, same-sex marriage is women and men. Aren't we seeing like these little trans, trans now concepts? The the what do they call pronouns and nouns? Hello, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. What do you think this whole body count thing is now? Now you women are talking about it like it's okay. And I and my people, yes, you Hispanics and natives. They which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. This has not benefited our nation of people because there's another nation of people that are doing this mostly and they're becoming influenced over our gente. And now our gente is becoming that, just like that. Now we're starting to see a lot of our young men having children and not taking care of them. So children are the oppressors and women rule over them. Hello? Makes perfect sense to me. Here's another problem for not knowing, okay? Not knowing also falls in line with the damn pastors and priests that we have. Malachi 2.7 says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The priest should be teaching us the law, statutes, and commandments. How do we renew our mind? How do we repent? What's salvation? Where does it stand? What do we do? Keeping the laws. Who am I according to the Bible? Why can't I find Mexican or Mexico in the Bible? For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. Meaning we should be finding him for the law and understanding of the, of the Bible. But instead, they're teaching not that. They're teaching all is welcome. God loves the sinner, not the sin. Homeless can, homeless can now teach, and, and, and lesbians can get married all of a sudden. Abortion is not an issue in these churches because they're okay with it now. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Hello. What other problems will we run into? Not knowing? This one. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night to wine and flame them. Now, they become alcoholics, these people, but you know what? A lot of our gente are becoming drunks now. We have a high rate of DUIs, a high rate of alcoholism, a high rate of overdose, a high rate of people that have addiction. What's another problem not knowing who you are according to the Bible? Deuteronomy 28, 28. Not only do you just become a drunk because, you know, it's, it's okay. Football every weekend, soccer every weekend, boxing every weekend. Man, F that, man. Just beer every day. Deuteronomy 28, 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and with blindness and astonishment of heart. 
That's another problem, family. To think that it's just, all you got to do is just pay bills and that's it. The hell with your children. The hell with your wife. Some of y'all have other wives or other women and other children and they don't even know it. That's madness, family. Blindness. Why? Because you don't know who you are according to the Bible. So you do all of this stupidity. An astonishment of heart, meaning why? The other nations will basically look at your astonished mind and just like, wow, these people are sick in the head. What is wrong with them? What's another problem? Here's one of the biggest problems, Galatians 5.19. We act on our sins, our temptations. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. You talk about Hispanics and native Indians. Y'all don't think that you do this all the time? What, you guys forget about? I don't even have to say it, family. Idolatry, witchcraft. Idolatry, the Virgin Mary? Witchcraft, the, 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 the dead, the, la, the Virgen de Muerte? Hatred, do we not, are we not crab-like with each other? Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, tradition, heresy, envy, and murder, drunkenness, reveling? And such like of, of the which I tell you before, as I have said, I have told you, as I have also told you in the time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And we see our people acting on every single one of them. This is why, family, the, the, the scriptures talk about discipline. It talks about discipline a lot. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4, it says, For into the malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline flee deceit, will flee deceit. Meaning when you're understanding the scriptures and you're not being sincere and you're still in sin, in your sinful manner, you're not going to ever change. And remove, and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness come in. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquire in a blasphemer of his word. For God is the witness of his reins, the true beholder of his heart, and the hearer of his tongue. Family, I'm going to tell you this right now. You got to start to subdue your own understanding. Subdue your own understanding. That's the one thing that we need to start doing in order to make these changes. The change comes from within. The change starts with us, so then it could be a collective change. Uh, second Edges 14, 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your heart or mind, ye shall be kept alive, and after that ye shall obtain mercy. You see that, fam? Subdue your own understanding. Subdue your own understanding. That's when discipline is going to start kicking in. Wisdom of Solomon 6, 17. Watch. For the very true beginning of her desire of her is the desire of discipline and the care of discipline's love. That's the first thing we got to do, family. We got to discipline our minds, subdue our own thoughts in order for us to renew our spirit. It starts with that, okay? First thing we got to do is that. The second thing we got to do, well, obviously, I mean, you could, it's a conjunction of both, honestly. Deuteronomy 28 and 1, it says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. I don't know about your family, but that's what I want of the most high. If he can treat me like a son like that, because right now I feel like a servant and I don't have any problem with that because I don't deserve salvation, to be quite frank with you. I'm repenting every day. But I fall short every time. Family. And I'd rather have that hum 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 like humble spirit, to be quite frank with you. Here's another thing we should be doing, family, in order to limit the issues between our gente. Matthew 18, 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his faults between thee and him alone. You don't got to go fight him. There's no need for guns. The reason we do that is because we're too emotional and we cannot be men and say, listen, brother, I offended you. I'm sorry. Listen, brother, you offended me. And you being a man and saying, I apologize. Because watch what it says. Go and tell him his faults between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Obviously, as you read the scriptures, it shows that there may be some that won't believe it, but that's fine. But we need to start doing these things in order to avoid us killing each other. Here's another thing. James 5.16. 
It reads, confess your faults one to another. What is wrong with just admitting that you made a mistake, fam? Admit your mistakes one to another and pray for one another, man. We never do that. Oh, you, you, you better say I'm sorry. Yeah, bro. No, man. It's like, listen, I'm sorry, bro. I made a mistake. Oh, hey, I understand. I sit, get on my knees, not right in front of him, maybe, but I pray for the brother or the sister or whatever. That's how it works, family. That's how change starts. You start calling each other as out in regards to sin. That's love. John, watch this. First John 4.20. First John 4.20 reads, If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. You see that, family? For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? Why? Because the most high dwelleth in you, family. And another thing, this is something that hopefully the brother listens to this because he needs to learn this. This is in general, but this is something for me personal. Matthew 5, uh, verse 23, it says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother had ought against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way before and first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Reconcile means reconciliation, means redeeming, means let's be like, let's be friends again. You see, brothers and sisters, when you don't Matthew 18 somebody or you don't allow someone to Matthew 18 you like, hey, man, you offended me and they have a grudge against you. You might as well not atone. Because you know you did something and you left that pending. You brothers that act like it's not true, you know damn well that you're being an immature child if you don't believe it. This is what it takes, family. The Day of Atonement, y'all got to be considerate of others, yourself. Make sure that you don't leave no rock unturned. No rock unturned. Oh, I went over a little bit over 20 minutes. I'm almost done, fam, all right? Last thing we need to do is this, fam, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself. As he had sworn unto thee. Oh man. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by thy name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. I'm gonna tell you something, fam. I don't know about really caring for them to be afraid of me, but what I do want is for the Most High to bless our entire nation. Because a lot of us have sick children, sick husbands. Sick wives, sick parents. You understand? Lord willing, this was an edifying class, family. I hope y'all appreciate that. Let me finish it with a shofar, as you know, and then I'll, I'll uh, end the class. Shalom. Hope it was edifying.